Hey friends, my name's Steven with Leviathan Snakes and this here is Amos. He is the very first ball python that we ever got. He's a banana calico hidden gene Wilma and he's gonna be helping me talk about marketing because it's another marketing video. So if you like our marketing videos, definitely stay tuned as well as hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe and let's get to it. This week's video is actually a follow-up to our last marketing video that we did where we talked about the entire consumer marketing funnel. I'm actually gonna link to it over here, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. And there'll be some stuff that's kind of hit on in both videos, but I'm gonna go in more depth specifically for the awareness phase. And as the title says, this is all about like giving you very, very specific action steps that you can use to deliberately go through and aim to build out your own marketing strategy, your own marketing plan, and effectively grow whatever presence and promote the product that you have for us it snakes these guys so for this week's video we are going to be diving in depth to the awareness phase and the awareness phase is the very first stage of the consumer marketing funnel and i'm not going to go into depth over everything i'm only going to focus on this so again if you guys haven't checked out that one video definitely check that out and come back and watch this one so the awareness stage, the goal of this is to let potential people who might want to buy your product or might be interested in getting a snake from you, know that you have that. You have banana calico hidden gene Wilma or anything like that. It could be like sunset, it could be puzzle, it could be anything. Just letting people know that you have this product or service and that you are able to fulfill a need if anybody has it. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about doing this. And a lot of times people say that they will throw out a post and say snakes for sale and then nobody wants to buy their snakes and they don't understand. They're like, I'm marketing. I'm marketing all the time and nobody ever cares about my marketing. Is the ball python industry is dead. And the thing that you have to kind of be aware of is everybody, literally everybody in the modern world, knows what an advertisement looks like. And when you see something that's blatantly an advertisement and it's essentially, say, it's essentially saying, hey, give me money, people ignore it. Even if it is something that they would like or that they could find useful, generally people ignore things that they view as advertisements. So the awareness phase is about getting people to not only know that you have this product, but it's getting them to pay attention to you. And there's gonna be some very, very specific like things that you have to do in order to generate the amount of impressions and awareness that you need, as well as some tips and kind of like strategies that you can use to make sure that they're not just simply like making a post that says buy my snake, but getting people to pay attention to it. So that's what we're kind of gonna, that's what we are going to kind of delve into in more depth for this video. So the goal of the awareness phase is get people to know that you have something. And in this case, it's gonna be ball pythons. The way that you do this is through impressions is how we're going to say. So impressions is when you say, hey, I have this ball python. And every single time that somebody hears you say, hey, I have this ball python, whether or not it's for sale, or it's just simply, hey, I have this ball python. Look how gorgeous he looks. He's so freaking pretty and he's so freaking cute. Bananas are the best. So every single time you say this, this is one impression. And there's kind of a rule of thumb that goes through like theory in the marketing world that says that you need somebody, one specific person to see your product or hear about your product or see an advertisement for your product seven different times before they will even consider buying it. This does not mean they see it seven times and they're gonna buy it, but that's how much saturation you need before you really get it going. So when you are building out your marketing strategy, one of the core tenets is building up as many different touch points as you can. So for us in the Python community, this is often done through social media and the base part of social media is making posts, organic content. So taking a picture of this boy right here and just saying like, Amos was the very first snake that we ever got. He's a banana inchy, inchy, nah, I'm actually, I'm wrong, I'm wrong on that. So he's a banana calico hidden gene walnut. His baby that we have, that we hatched out this last year, he's the banana inchy calico hidden gene walnut. But anyways, we make a post of him and we show him off. What that does is anybody who sees that post knows that we have a banana calico hidden gene Wilma. 
and if we mentioned his baby and all that stuff, which we actually don't have any of his babies for sale, the only ones we have left are holdbacks. But let's say that we were wanting to advertise them, showing him off, and then saying like, he had his first clutch for us this year, the dame to the clutch was a cinnamon inchy, they're absolutely gorgeous. All of this stuff is an advertisement, if you can think of it like this, because it's implying that we have these animals for sale. Whether or not we directly say, hey, they're for sale or not, that doesn't matter. It's the fact that we made a post that shows it, it talks about it, and we push it out to people who might be interested. Again, none of them are for sale, so that's not like what the point of this is. So when you are building out your content, it is important to show these are the projects that I'm working in. And this is really easy because snakes are beautiful and people love seeing like gorgeous pictures of snakes. So even if you haven't produced it, even if there's not anything exciting going on, you don't need to wait for a clutch to be laid or new babies to be hatching to make a post. You can take a picture of whatever snakes that you're doing and just saying like, oh, they're growing so fast. Maybe next year, if everything goes right, they're gonna be ready to breed. And you're just showing it and you're talking about the morphs and you're talking about the projects that you're in. So this like type of content is really, really important to do before you have something to sell because you need to get those seven impressions per person before you have a product to sell because if you're waiting until you have something to sell and then you're trying to generate those seven impressions, the sales aren't gonna come quick enough. And if you are relying on the money from the hatchling sales, maybe you had taken something out on credit and you're trying to use the sales of your hatchlings to pay it back. The longer that you don't sell them, the more desperate somebody can get. And that's like an issue within the ball python community is the fact that some people feel that they can't sell their hatchlings fast enough and then they say things like the ball python market's dead, it's oversaturated, nobody wants to buy them, things like this. If you are building up your marketing presence and you're getting those seven impressions per project, per person, before, way before, like a year before you ever have something to sell, you're going to do way, way better. So this is one goal is get up to those seven impressions. Another goal that you want to do is that consumers need to trust whoever they are buying from, especially when it comes to animals. So you always hear about buy snakes from reputable breeders. That does not necessarily mean buy snakes from big breeders. Reputation and trust can be generated by anybody. And there are three major factors that make people trust others. One of them is called relatability. So relatability is the concept that people tend to trust others who they perceive to be like them. So I myself am a big nerd. I love d and I love science fiction, I love fantasy. If I found another breeder who is also really, really big into D&D and they talked to me and we had a conversation about like the best classes in fifth edition, we were talking about our favorite fantasy authors, that alone, even though it has nothing to do with snakes, it builds trust between them because you feel like that you're, you're friends with each other. And if you feel like you're friends with each other, your friends aren't going to lie to you and trick you and try to scam you. So relatability, being able to show your outside interests beyond ball pythons. It's giving you an avenue to connect with potential customers that wouldn't be there anyway. You may be, you may be able to strike up a conversation, build a bunch of trust with somebody, it has nothing to do with ball pythons, but that could be the deciding factor on whether or not they buy from you or from Justin Kobolka because they've made a meaningful connection with you. So relatability is one. In your content, when you are building out your awareness phase, throwing out not only the fact that you have very specific projects or anything, but also throwing out your other interests, your other hobbies, your other passions. So that's gonna be really, really important. The next step is transparency. So transparency is the idea that if there's anything going on, any kind of informa information, even if it's bad, the business is willing to share that with their consumer. And if the consumer believes that the business is being 100% transparent, they're going to be way more likely to trust them. So let's say that you had a clutch of babies. Let's say Amos had a clutch of babies this upcoming year and one of the babies was just mean. It was always striking, super defensive, it was a rude baby. If we were trying to sell that baby to somebody and they were interested to it, and we were like, hey, just so you're aware, this baby is really rude, they're always defensive, they're always strident, they're a great eater, but just so you're aware, you might have to do some work to tame them down. That transparency, because it's perceived as something that's negative, is going to make them trust us way more because they're gonna be like, well, if he's trying to like, kind of convince me not to buy his snake already, 
if there was a problem, he'd let me know. That kind of concept. The last concept, the last attribute that builds trust between a business and a consumer is traceability. So traceability is a description of the process that it takes to make something. So for example, for snakes, posts about him locking with whatever females he's paired to, posts about the female laying the eggs, a video that shows from start to finish the locks, the egg laying, the incubation, candling, all of that stuff, all the way up until the baby's hatching out. All of that stuff is a way for the consumer to trace the process of the specific product or the specific snake and see the entire way how it was made. And being able to understand that and being able to see it, all of that information is going to be really, really important in generating trust. So when you are working on your brand awareness strategy, I, my advice is at first start on one platform and I do think that Instagram is the best bang for your buck. The reason why is that Instagram doesn't take a whole lot of extra skill set in it. It's taking pictures and smartphones nowadays take amazing pictures. And if you watched a couple YouTube videos on lighting, you can take incredible pictures that blow people out of the water just from an iPhone. So if you start on Instagram, the way that I would say is every single day, not every single weekday, not three times a week, every single day have one picture that you post, bare minimum. And if you can do one picture every single day and you're able to get it like done right, by the, by the time that you have babies ready, you are going to have an audience and you are going to have like people who want to support you and buy from you. Now, the thing is, when I say just taking one picture a day, that isn't, that's not really true. You have to do a lot more than just one picture a day to do well. And we're gonna kind of get into that too. From your one picture a day, what this does is every 24 hours, you are having a new piece of content that can generate an impression with those who have decided to follow you. Also, when people decide to follow you, they often go to your profile and they look at all of your content, or at least like the first couple swipes on your homepage or your profile page, and decide whether or not your content's like high quality enough or if it fits the kind of vibe that they are looking for. So. If you are taking pictures and you're posting one every single day, it shows that you are an active account and that you're like a real person, that it's not just some random dude who made a post three times last summer and hasn't done anything since and they don't even know if the account is active anymore. So why would you follow an account like that? That kind of thing. So when you are making your posts, I think that it is really important to do posts that are focused on your projects, posts that are focused on your process for the traceability, as well as posts that are focused on you. But because it's snakes for us, we always wanna to try to keep snakes related to it somehow. So try to have a snake in it. Even if you had like a picture of Amos here, or we had a picture of Amos and we wanted to talk about like playing guitar because I am not super good, but I do like playing guitar and it's fun and it's cool. And I posted a picture of him on the guitar. What this does is it shows the projects that we're in by showing him. It also shows outside interests by showing the guitar. Maybe somebody might strike up a conversation with us talking about like that they have a Gibson Les Paul and that they absolutely love it and things like this. Or they might talk about like the fact that they're a drummer and that if we're ever in the same town sometime, we should be him, that kind of thing. So try to do pictures that hit on multiple different things, as well as as they're growing up and you want to take a picture of like maybe their weight. You can show like Amos has put on X amount of grams since the last time we weighed him. That's kind of showing the process. So these are different content ideas and they're done quite a bit. So it's not necessarily like groundbreaking, but there are different ideas, different strategies that you can do. On top of doing one post a day, because I do think that that is the bare minimum to have any actual success, one post a day on Instagram. I think that it is critical that you are going out to other people who are interested in the same types of things that you are. So in this, it's ball pythons and engaging with them. So I would say in addition to one post a day, you should go to the search feature, type in hashtag ball python, and then go to recent. And on recent, you should just click on a couple of the different profiles of people who've posted a picture with hashtag ball pythons recently, go to their page, like five to seven of their pictures, because again, every single time that they see your name, they see your logo and it comes up on a notification, that's another impression, like five to seven other pictures, leave two or three comments, genuine, meaningful content, comments, by the way, and just 
do that. Just reach out to people and just build up impressions that way as you're going throughout your awareness phase because as you are reaching out, they will come and check out your page too because that's one of the hardest parts of the awareness phase is that first, nobody knows who you are so it's really hard to just get noticed. And if you are actively going out commenting on other people's pictures, liking other people's pictures, they are way more likely to come over and just check you out. And if they like your page, if they like your content, if your pictures look cool, if they see that maybe you have a similar interest to them, maybe you both play guitar and you have a picture of one of your guitars, you might make that connection. They might start following you and that's how you kind of build up these relationships throughout time. Now, beyond organic posts and comments, because comments are really more part of your engagement phase, which is a different video. We'll do a follow-up to that one at some point too. So beyond those, Instagram is really, really, really favoring reels right now. So they are competing with TikTok, and because of this, in the algorithm, they are boosting regular, or they are boosting reels more than they are boosting regular posts, just organically. So in addition to making one post every single day, maybe those are just pictures, also try to make one to three reels a day. And these are a little bit harder because video is way harder to make than just snapping a picture. But simply, just how you would just take a picture of your snake, just hold your snake in good lighting with your phone and just record moving them around and stuff like that. And then whenever you're ready to post your reel, all you have to do is just find a song that you like, a trending song, by the way. You wanna get like something that's on the hot list because if it's trending, you're going to get a boost in the algorithm already. If a trending audio, I mean, you're gonna get a boost in the algor algorithm rather than just some random song that you happen to like but nobody else is using right now. So just take the picture, or the video, I mean, of the snake as you're just kind of moving them, showing them off, put it to the audio, and just post the reel like you would a picture. And just say, oh, it's a beautiful banana cal or banana calico hidden gene Woma, who is our first snake. Exactly the type of caption you would do for your picture, do it on your reel. It's not going to go necessarily viral, but you are going to get the benefits of the boosted organic reach from reels over a regular picture. So just something to keep in mind there. And if you get some like cool ideas for reels, definitely do it. These are just like really simple foundational things you can do to start off. Now, Beyond your reels and beyond your uh, regular posts, stories are also really important to Instagram. Stories do not go beyond the people who are already following you unless that other person directly goes to your profile. The reason why stories are really important is that they give like almost a behind the scenes kind of look. They don't have to be as polished. They make people feel real through the camera or through kind of thing. So when you are doing your stories, I may have said reels early, but stories, stories, try to aim for about three to seven stories a day. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Literally, any time that you open up a tub, just simply open it up while you're taking a little bit of a video, just being like, oh, checking on my favorite snake today, that kind of thing. So while you are doing this just throughout the day, you are getting in extra impressions for the people who are already following you. It also shows to Instagram that you're using all of their features. There's one other feature I wanna talk about beyond those three, but those are your three core ones, is organic posts, your reels, and your stories. The last one is IG Live IGTV. So IGTV is actually any video on Instagram that's over a minute long. And you can have something under a minute long that can be posted as like a video, but it doesn't come up as IGTV and it might not necessarily be a reel. But IGTV is over a minute long and lives are very obviously like recorded live. So you are able to interact with the chat. The reason why these are important is they're really good avenues to collaborate with other creators. So you can reach out to another ball python breeder who's roughly at the same time as you and be like, hey, do you want, would you be interested in doing an Instagram live with me? And we can just talk and kind of interview, talk about how we got into the hobby. What projects are you in? What things are you looking forward to this season? It gives people a, in real time, way to connect with you rather than sending a message waiting for your response or a comment. It is like in the chat, you can answer questions. It's a really, really good way to interact with people get priority in the story feed because they pop up first in their different colors. So people might see that you are live and they'd be like, oh, what are they live about? And they might tune in. And if they like you, if you're engaging on the live, they may be like, oh, this is pretty cool. I wanna keep watching this. I'm going to engage. Maybe I was already following them, but I hadn't really talked about them more and they seem like really cool people. 
So lives are important because they build up a deeper connection with those who are interested in you. In addition, once you're done with the live, you can select to post it as an IGTV, so that way you always have that experience up there for anybody else to go back and watch. The thing that I like so much about them is that you can pretty much knock out two birds with one stone. You do one live and you get your live in real time and you get the IGTV. So I, that's why I think that they're really cool. If Instagram, for the actual like platform itself, if it sees that you are effectively doing all of their different features, what it does is it raises your health score, which I don't think that they've actually made this public yet, but they are going to be releasing it. It'll be in a section in like your profile on your Instagram health score. The higher your Instagram health score is, and this is essentially saying like, oh, this is a real person who is actively engaged both with the platform and with the people who they are following and following them and all that stuff. They make awesome content. We want to make sure that this person who has a really high health score never has a reason why they want to leave Instagram. We don't want them to, we don't want to lose them to TikTok. We don't want to lose them to YouTube. So we want to make sure whenever they post content, they are getting priority in the algorithm. So the higher your health score is, the easier it is for you to trend on hashtags. And there is a whole strategy on hashtags, which Honestly, this is the video for it. So we're gonna get into it. So hashtags are critical to organic growth on Instagram, both for the actual search feature of it and be, they help inform the predictive algorithm. So the way that hashtags work is that you make a post and Instagram wants to show this post to the people that would like it the most. Because if I'm watching, watching reels on Instagram, and I'm seeing a bunch of reels that I don't care about, I'm gonna close the app and I'm not gonna go to Instagram. And if it happens too much, I'm like, ah, oh, Instagram's reels suck. I don't wanna watch them. I'm gonna go on TikTok instead. And Instagram loses market share. So Instagram wants to be really, really good on trying to put the right reels, the right content in front of the right people to make sure that it serves them best. So when you are working on hashtags, this is how Instagram figures it out. It's like the first step that they do in it. So if you have a post and you have a hashtag ball pythons, what it does is if anybody searches hashtag ball pythons or they're following hashtag ball pythons, there is a chance that they can see your post. If they sort by recent and you just posted it, they will see it. If they are sort, sorted by trending or hot, which is what most people do, the only way they'll see it is if Instagram recognizes that that piece of content that you posted is high enough quality that it deserves to get boosted. It deserves to get recommended by the algorithm to other people. And the way that it does that is that Instagram says that this piece of content keeps people on our platform or gets them to interact with our platform more or longer. So when you are building out your content, it is important to have a hashtag that is directly related to the content that you're posting. And I see this a lot where people will post a picture of a clutch and it might say hashtag ball python. And then the next one says hashtag hard work. And then the next one says hashtag success. And then the last one is like hashtag lucky, that kind of thing. Realistically, with the way that Instagram sees it, only one of those hashtags actually related to that content. Because what happens is you see a clutch of ball python babies and it says hashtag ball python. Instagram might, may take that post and push it out to a couple people who are following hashtag ball python. And they see the post and they're like, oh, those are some gorgeous babies and they like it. Maybe they leave a comment, maybe they save it. Maybe they share it to somebody else being like, hey, did you see this clutch? All of those actions help tell Instagram, hey, this piece of content's really high quality. Then Instagram goes to the next hashtag, hashtag hard work. And maybe most of the people who are following hashtag hard work are like athletes or like they are really, really into fitness. So all of the hashtag hard work is like somebody like getting swole or getting really, really cut. They just look good. It's about health and fitness and all this stuff. And then they see this post about some baby ball pythons and they're like, what is that? I hate snakes. I'm scared of snakes, that kind of thing. And they scroll past the memory card like got full as I was going on my rant there. So I don't actually know where I cut off, but I'm going to kind of try to recap and I'll figure out in editing where this all goes. Follow for follow is really, really dangerous to the health of your Instagram account. And the reason why is if you have the majority of your followers 
like let's say you have a thousand followers and 900 of them came from follow for follow and then you have a hundred that are like actual like friends, family, people you know in real life. What happens is, is whenever you make a post, Instagram will take that post to a subsection of your current followers. So let's say that you might get a hundred of your current followers and it's not going to be the hundred people that you actually know, though they will be in there too. There'll be some of the people who came from follow for follow and it's going to display your content to those people. And what will happen is as your new picture, your new reel, your new whatever it is, get seen by these people and they interact with it. And the reason why they don't interact with it is because they don't actually care about you just like you didn't actually care about them because you weren't following them because you genuinely enjoyed their content. You weren't following them because you had made a connection. Maybe it was in real life or through a message or comment or anything like that. You were just following them to get a higher follower count. And when they see your content, they did the same thing. They followed you not because they were engaged with your content, but to get a higher follower account because it was follow for follow. And they see your picture, they don't like it, they don't comment, they just keep scrolling, if they even scroll at all, because maybe they don't actually like Instagram that much and they never use it. So then they're never actually on. So what happens is Instagram sees that, hey, of the hundred people who saw this post, the majority of them didn't interact with it at all. They didn't care. And these are the people who should care about this content the most because they're the people who are actually following this account. Because the people who care about this content the most are not engaging with the content, it must not be high quality. That's the way that Instagram's platform thinks. And if it's not high quality, they are not going to push it out to new people and let it trend on an algorithm, let it trend on a hashtag, because they want people to stay on the platform as long as possible. And if they are showing content that is boring, that's their kind of idea on it, or not high quality, people will be like, ah, Instagram has just crap pictures now and I can't ever see anything that looks pretty. I'm not going to stay on Instagram. I'm gonna go to TikTok or YouTube. And that's what Instagram does not want. So follow for follow does nothing to actually help you. Just stay away from it, don't do that. But all the way, circling back to the hashtag conversation, because I know I'm kind of like winding around. When you are doing your hashtags, you want them hyper-focused on the actual niche of the topic of your content. In addition to that, you want to stair-step them throughout the content. So you can have up to 30 hashtags on any given post. If you do all of the biggest hashtags on that post, these are all hashtags that have 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million plus people posting to it. It is going to be so competitive to trend on those hashtags that small accounts are not going to have the volume of audience in order to really like get the algorithm's attention. Instead, the way that you work it is that you start off with lower hashtags. So let's say that you start off with hashtag snake mom. Hashtag snake mom might have like 60,000 people posting to it versus like hashtag snakes, which might have 5 million people posting to it. So you post with hashtag snake mom in there and Instagram sends out your content to your current followers. And let's say a decent number of them engage with it. What then happens is like, all right, their current followers seem to like this. Let's test it with a really, really small subsection of one of the smaller hashtags, just to like see how they do. So then they take it to maybe a thousand people on hashtag snake mom. And then let's say a lot of those people start engaging with it. Like, oh, these people like this content and they aren't even following the account. Okay, maybe it is pretty good content. Let's try it out on something a little bit more competitive and bigger. And then as it keeps snowballing, you can go, you can trend on a hashtag that's really small that might have 10,000 fo people following it up to a hashtag with 50,000, up to 100,000, up to 300,000, up to a million. That's how you build up. And that's how a account with a thousand followers or something like that can trend on hashtag snakes. It's because they're kind of stair-stepping their way up there. They're not just hitting hashtag snakes right away. So when you are building out your brand awareness content strategy, in addition to all of your posts, you need to identify hashtags that are directly related to your niche. And this is pretty easy because you can kind of look at any other post that is in your niche that does well. And these are gonna be your hot, the hot posts in the Instagram like section and just see what hashtags they're using. You don't even have to necessarily go into depth. Just 
find some of them. You don't necessarily want to directly copy and paste, but you do want to have like a bank that you can kind of like, oh, I'm going to use hashtag ball pythons today. Tomorrow, I'm going to use ball pythons of Instagram and kind of go like that. That way you're having some variety. If Instagram sees that you're using the exact same hashtags every single day, they're going to be like, eh, they aren't really fresh. These people on these hashtags have seen so much of their content recently. We're not gonna even promote this one because even though it is doing well, we don't want them to get bored and tired and feel like that they're only seeing the same thing every single day. So vary up your hashtags. That way you do one set of hashtags on Monday, a different set on Tuesday, a different set on Wednesday, so on and so forth. So that way you kind of have that diversity and different audiences are seeing your content. Now you get your daily posts, you get one to three reels a week, you get like three to seven stories a day, and then you're making sure you're putting in your hashtags like appropriately, building out your hashtag strategy. Now, what this does is throughout the whole year, you are going to have a bunch of different pieces of content. And some of them are gonna do well, some of them are going to do poorly. Some that you think are absolutely amazing are just gonna bomb. And it doesn't actually matter. Instagram changes its algorithm. They vary the different like reach that different things get as they're kind of testing within their own environment. You just gotta keep working it. Like just because something doesn't go viral right away, just because something went viral and now you just can't seem to get the same reach, just gotta keep doing it. Just gotta keep, it comes in waves and it's the consistency of it. It's doing it every day. It's making sure that you have a habit of it. That's what's going to build you up. Again, the goal of this phase is not get the most followers possible. That's not the point. It is so much better to have a smaller amount of followers who are actively engaged with you. And again, engagement is its, in its own entire phase of the consumer marketing funnel. And we'll definitely do a video on engagement. But it is better to have a smaller number of truly engaged followers than a bunch of followers who you got from follow for follow and nobody actually cares about your content. Because in the marketing aspect, the end goal is being able to fulfill a need of these consumers. And that if you have ball pythons for sale and you have a thousand followers and these thousand followers love you and they trust you and that they know all of the projects that you are in and that the second that you have a clutch, they want to buy from you because they want to support you. That is worth more than having 10,000 followers who nobody cares about you because they only followed you because you followed them back. I, as you can probably tell, have strong feelings against follow for follow. And I think that deliberate social media strategy, social media marketing can be one of the most effective tools that any business can do. And honestly, it doesn't cost any money. It costs time, it costs knowledge. So like research, research your own stuff on social media marketing. Don't just simply take a picture and call it a day. Research lighting, writing copy, such as like specifically for captions. So copy in marketing term is like written advertisements. Figure out ways that you can become a better writer. You can use like videography, all of these different stuff. If you see some cool trend, just play with it. it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you just have to do something. It is the number one most important thing of the awareness phase is getting out those impressions. And the only way you can do that is by posting content. So again, one last recap one post a day. It can be a picture, it can be a reel, it can be a carousel, it could be a graphic, doesn't matter. One post a day, one to three reels a week, three to seven stories a day. And if you can get in a live and then turn it into an IGTV, aim for once a month. Just once a month, try to do a live with somebody and kind of work it through that way. You do it for a year. By the end of the year, when you finally have a snake to sell, you will have a viable audience who's ready to support you. So we hope that this video helped. Again, I'll do a follow-up one where I'm going in depth on the engagement phase. If you haven't seen that one video from earlier, I linked it down below. I'll throw one more um, card up for it and we will see you next week.